it didn't happen in 2012. Will it happen in 2060? I'm talking about end of the world and Newton's controversial prediction about it. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lucid Mystery Channel. Today we're going to talk more about end of the world and apocalypse. And I'm saying more because we've already talked about it a little and looked at the signs that Islam has told us to expect them near the world's ending. We talked about coronavirus and the reason why it seems really convincing that COVID-19 is really likely to be one of the biggest signs that we were told to expect. And today we are going to talk about its time and Newton's prediction about it. I'm really eager to get down to this one but before that, please don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to help us and hit that notification bell to be notified every time we post a video. With all that being said, let's get down to it and make the apocalypse's mystery lucid, shall we? So 2012 was the year that was promised to be the end of the world, from Nostradamus to the Mayas. 2012 was considered to be the end of the world and of course you remember the fear and the panic that everybody was buying candles and some rich people bought apocalyptic shelters deep underground. But 2012 has passed, we're living in 2021 and we're dealing with COVID-19 and lockdowns and some people start talking about a prediction. A prediction from a big name, Newton. I mean, come on, can't we just live the moment like Pepsi says? I'm not advertising Pepsi though, Coca-Cola is cooler. But it seems serious because it's coming from Isaac Newton. So first, let's talk about Newton himself because it convinces us more that it's more serious and then get to the prediction itself. Isaac Newton was an English scientist. He was born in Lincolnshire in the early days of 1643, 25th of December. Newton never met his father because he died three months prior to his son's birthday. Newton also was a premature child and doctors had no hopes that he will make it. Newton was so small that his mother reportedly has said that he could fit in a cork mug. But of course he was able to make it and make it to Cambridge University at the age of 18. But Newton was not able to afford his tuition, that is why he had to do the cleanings at the university. The discovery of gravity, refraction of light, and his three laws of motion made him one of the world's greatest scientists. In 1696, Newton was named to the job of Warden of the Royal Mint, which was responsible for producing England's currency. Also from 1689 to 1690, he was a member of parliament representing Cambridge University. He died in London at the age of 84. He became the first person to be buried in Westminster Abbey, the Royal Church. This church belongs to the royal members of England. After Newton, figures such as Charles Darwin, Ernest Rutherford, Michael Faraday, and Charles Dickens, the famous author, were buried at this place. But nowadays, no one's talking about the apple and the gravity when talking about Newton. People are talking about the controversial prediction of the end of the world, and that is what the spotlight is on right now. You might not know, but actually, throughout his life, he kept saying that he had revealed the mystery of the Bible, and that is the end of the world in 2060. This is one of his prophecies that he has made, but what other predictions he has made to convince us even more that this is also true. One of the scientists said he was neither a mathematician nor a physicist, but actually his specialty is in theology. But how did he decipher the Bible with the help of mathematics? In 1936, a box full of papers was sold at an auction in London. There were lots of hidden secrets in the papers. Mysterious papers full of mathematical calculations that according to the author, the world is going to end in 2060. These papers belong to the one and only Isaac Newton, which are based on biblical research, but he refused to publish them at that time because it could be dangerous for him. Newton never married. He tried to use his art in mathematics to decipher the Bible, but his belief was sometimes against the church at that time. He always rejected the most common Christian belief, the Trinity, and this was a crime in the 17th century. The unity of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as three persons in one Godhead. Trinity is considered to be one of the central Christian affirmations about God. His mathematical mind miraculously revealed patterns, symbols, codes and dates in the Bible. He began to arrange and rearrange the dates until he reached the mysterious date. 2060. 
Newton writes, the truth can be uncovered only by a remnant, a few scattered persons which God has chosen. He spent most of his life deciphering the book of prophet Daniel and the Bible. His first step in deciphering the history of the end of the world included phrases describing Solomon's temple. The temple of Solomon was built a thousand years before Christ and was destroyed 400 years later by the Babylonians. Seventy years later, another temple was built in the same place and Holy Jesus Christ visited it. But this temple was also destroyed by the Romans in 70 Anno Domini. This shows the time when the Jewish people were expelled from Israel by the Romans. It says in the Bible that when the uprising is near, the Jews will return to Israel and build the temple for the one last time. And on that day, human beings will seek death but won't find it. They will look for death but death is far from them. This is what Bible says. 1290 years. This is how much Newton believes will take until the resettlement of the Jewish people in their land. But 1290 years since when? 609 Anno Domini. This is the date when the Roman Empire gave part of their power to the church and by adding 1290 to it, we get 1899. The year in which Zionism was attracting more followers. In the same decade, the first Zionist Congress was held. Zionism supports the return of the Jewish people to Jerusalem. But the book of prophet Daniel gives us another number. 1335. By adding 609 to it, we get 1944, the year that World War II ended, the year that ended the Holocaust, fortunately. These two events accelerated the formation of the Israel government in 1948, so they're both correct. But what about 2060? It says in the book of Daniel, how long will it take until the end of these wonders? And the durations are a time times and half a time. The same phrase can also be found in the Holy Bible. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle, so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness, where she would be taken care of for a time, times and half a time. But what is the secret behind a time, times and half a time? Newton believes that time means one year. The book of Daniel introduces a year as 360 days, so accordingly, one year equals 360 days, two years equals 720 days, and half a year equals 180 days, obviously. The sum of these numbers equals 1260, and he believes that these days represent the year. Also, according to the numbers we talked about, he believed that the end of the world is a thousand and two hundred sixty years after the founding of Rome. The year 800 Anno Domini, a very important year in the history of the church. This is the date of the year when the Pope crowned Charlemagne. So, 1260 years after the year 800 Anno Domini. So let's do the math again. Adding 800 to 1260 years, we get 2060. Newton has written, the time, times and half a time do not end before 2060 nor after. This is also showing something else. Newton died of poisoning in 1927, and his manuscript box was found mysteriously more than two centuries later, and it was auctioned. One of the buyers of the manuscript was a Palestinian Jew named Abraham Judah. He kept the papers with him for the rest of his life, and after his death the manuscript passed to the state of Israel. But is it a coincidence that these manuscripts are where Newton sees as the place that the apocalypse or the ending day will start from? Well, I'm smelling conspiracy theory. The book of prophet Daniel describes the return of the Jews to Jerusalem as the beginning of the end. Is the formation of the state of Israel related to this? Because Newton also mentions the role of another country in the return of the Jews to Jerusalem in his writings. The return and construction of Jerusalem is likely to be done not only by Zions, but also by a friendly country. As it was said earlier, the reconstruction of the Temple of Solomon is one of the signs. But where is it? Where is this temple? 
Jerusalem Alexa Mosque, the first Qibla of Muslims, meaning the place that Muslims pray towards and the place where the three religions of Islam, Judaism and Christianity are united. Perhaps the attempt to destroy Alexa Mosque to rebuild the Temple of Solomon might start a war that will destroy the world. Is it why Middle East is never safe? There was and is always a war happening in Middle East and countries aren't friendly with each other. Now amongst all these predictions of religions and scientists, especially Newton, almost all religions predicted appearance of a very cruel character that is against Christianity and Islam and Judaism and every other religion almost. He will try to unite ignorant people and lead them towards the war that will end the world and humanity. But also religions have predicted appearance of a savior at the moments when humans are praying from deep down their heart and are asking God or Allah for help. And then of course the savior will finally appear and will be victorious over the cruel character and will save the world surely. Now the cruel character might have been born and maybe has the power right now and is leading the governments towards fighting each other. Because when we think about it, we're like, how stupid. Won't people be able to tell the difference between good and bad? Can't they tell who is good and who is fighting against the good? And I gotta say, just look around you. Are we able to tell who is right and who is not in wars? Because each government has good things to say that is convincing and also there are other reasons why the same government isn't right. That is how complicated it is. And again, according to Newton, life finally ends with the impact of a fiery comet on earth. The author of Racing Toward Armageddon says that Christian fundamentalists believe that the return of Christ has three signs. The first is gathering of Jews in Israel, which took place in 1948 with the formation of Israel. The third is reconstruction of Solomon's temple. Although we cannot be sure that 2060 is the end of the world, but however, we're getting closer to it. And religious wars have not ended, but instead we're having more wars over religious reasons. Holy Bible says, and the sudden manifestation of light and sound and the thunder of a great earthquake so that the islands were scattered and there were no more mountains. And interestingly, Quran says, <laughs> Newton was mostly focused on the result of Armageddon. Bible says, finally God will appear on the earth and for thousand years heaven will be on earth. And it's the same in Islam. Muslims believe Imam Mahdi is the savior. Bible says there will be no moanings, no sadness, no cryings. Now whether 2060 will be the end of the world or not, we gotta say if we are still alive. But until then, please don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to motivate us in creating content like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified every time we post a video. Yeah, that's how fast it is. I guess I was a rapper in my previous life. Uh, what do you call it? That. I, I guess I was a good rapper. A fast one. Yeah. Mm. See you in the next mystery. Lucid mystery, baby!